there is no count of number of animal species living across the globe inhabiting various biomes. But one thing that can be told with certainty, a lot of these animals live in tropical forests. This can be explained by a study carried out by a scientist. This scientist collected beetles from just 19 trees in the rainforest of Panama and counted nearly 1000 species. This proves that the total number of tropical beetles worldwide could be millions. Beetles may outnumber other animal species, yet tropical forests are still home to countless other insects, spiders and all sorts of animals no one probably would have heard of. With so many animal species living in the tropical forests, one might wonder how so many species can survive in such a crowded place. Do they end up eating each other's food or getting into each other's way? Not at all. They avoid such problems and the reason is because each animal species has its own particular way of life or niche. It eats certain foods, lives in a certain part of the forest and uses its very own unique skills to survive. Niche of each animal is a combination of habitat, behavior and time. Like an animal that feeds at night has a different niche than the animal that feeds during the day. These two species of bats might fly in the same area, looking out for insects to eat. But one bat might prefer large moths, while the other one may eat only flies. In this manner, they do not come in each other's way. As a result, all the species of tropical forest coexist with each other. Tropical forests in different parts of the world have different sets of animals, but they often have similar niches. This has resulted in unrelated animals becoming similar through evolution. Scientists have termed this kind of evolution as convergent evolution. For example, South America's toucans can be compared to the hornbills of Africa and Asia. Both these birds have long bills and they use their spectacularly long bills to break open nuts and fruits. Another example of convergent evolution is Pudu and Mouse Deer. These two animals look and behave in the same way but live on the opposite side of the world. While Pudus have made the forests of South America their home, Mouse Deers can be found in the dense forests of Malaysia. Pudus feed on fruits and are only 30 cm long and can be compared to the size of rabbits. Pudus and mouse deer share the title of world's smallest deer. Mouse deer too are no bigger than rabbits and they too feed on fruits. These deer species have evolved in similar ways because they occupy similar niches in the rainforest. Sometimes one niche is filled with different types of animals. Like there are no monkeys or lemurs in the tropical forests of Australia. As a result, the fruit-eating niche is filled by the birds there. These birds are pigeons and parrots. Monkeys are agile creatures that are found all over the forest and are perhaps the most familiar of forest animals. They can be seen at the highest branches in the treetops to the forest floors. They are also found along the edges of rivers. Monkeys belong to a larger group of animals called primates. Nearly all of the primates live in tropical forests. The primate group also includes apes, lemurs and smaller animals called bush babies. Apes have bigger arms and no tail. They are much bigger than monkeys. Lemurs can be distinguished from monkeys by their cat-like faces with long snouts. Lemurs live only on the island of Madagascar where there are no monkeys. Bush babies are night active primates with huge eyes to enable them to see in the dark. Monkeys, apes and lemurs 
live in social groups, but the night active primates tend to live on their own or with their offspring. This is the mandrill, the world's largest monkey. It lives on the floor of Africa's Congo rainforest. Male monkeys are often larger than the females. This is because the male monkeys have to fight with each other to win mates. Only adult males sport the bright markings for which the mandrills are famous for. Mandrills live in social group and have a ranking system in the group. The top ranking male usually gets more mating opportunities than his rivals in the group. These high ranking male mandrills have bright blue and red marks on their face as a display of status. This pygmy marmoset is the world's smallest monkey. It weighs just 90 grams and can sit easily on a hand. It lives in the northern part of the Amazon rainforest. Large monkeys can be seen swinging through the trees while these pygmy marmosets are small enough to sit on blades of grass. There are nearly 200 species of monkeys and the majority of them live in tropical forests. Most of them eat fruits and leaves. But there are few species like capuchins that feed on all sorts of food and their diet includes shellfish, insects and small frogs. It is a common belief that apes are nothing but large monkeys. But apes are very different than the monkeys. Apes do not have tails and most apes have arms longer than their legs unlike monkeys that have long back legs and shorter arms. Monkeys can scamper along the branches but apes climb more slowly. Gibbons are exceptional and use their long arms to swing below the branches. These are orangutans. They are red-head apes that live on only two islands in Southeast Asia. They are also called the gentle giants and have to spend their whole lives in the trees as they find it difficult to walk on the ground. This is because their feet are turned inwards for holding branches. To sleep at night, the orangutans weave beds out of twigs and branches high in the trees. Apes like chimpanzees and gorillas live in large groups in the forest of Central Africa. Spending most of the time on ground, they also love to sleep in beds woven out of tree branches. All the species of apes live in tropical forest except for one and they are the humans. Yes, humans also come in the category of apes. It is interesting to note that many mammals living in the tropical forests are smaller than their relatives living in other biomes. These small animals are called pygmies. For example, pygmy elephant and pygmy hippos can be found in Africa's Congo rainforest. Pygmy elephants are about half in weight than their savanna cousins and pygmy hippos are one-tenth the weight of other hippos. Even deer in the rainforest are as small as rabbit. One reason that can be underlined for them to be small is that it helps them move through undergrowth. Second reason is that there is more high energy food like fruits in the forests. Small mammals need constant supply of energy but in contrast larger mammals digest and use their food more slowly. Savanna elephants grow to a huge size as they eat a large quality of poor quality food. Sitting on the branch of the tree, this is the tree kangaroo. It is a relative of the kangaroos we are more familiar with and that hop around on the ground. It is interesting to know that there are no monkeys in the forests of Australia and New Guinea. As a result, other mammals are taken to the trees. The tree kangaroo has more muscular arms and wider feet than its cousin that dwell on the ground and uses the claws on its hand to grip branches. It is also capable of hopping along the ground when the need arises. 
tropical forests are also home to various kind of rodents like mice, rats, beavers and squirrels. Usually most rodents are small but there are exceptions. Like this agouti has evolved into a two feet giant and is often mistaken for a small deer. It is found in the South American forests and is considered to be a shy and secretive rodent that searches the forest floor for fallen fruits. Agouti has an even bigger relative called the capybara that can grow more than four feet long and can weigh as much as a person. This makes the capybara the biggest rodent in the world. Capybaras are good at swimming and live close to rivers, lakes and marshes. Locally, they are known as water pigs, but they are close relatives of rats than of pigs. Bear and hoofed animals like deer and cattle also can be found in the tropical forests. The bears living here are smaller than the giant hunters of the cold region. These are the honey bears that live in India and Sri Lanka and as their name suggests, their favorite food is honey. Tropical bears are not hunters of large animals. Instead, their diet includes a mixture of fruit, roots, leaves and insects. Cats occupy the category of top predators of the forest and the most famous amongst all the cats is the tiger. Tigers once occupied forests throughout Asia, but now they are among the endangered species and can be found in small, protected pockets of forest. These tigers are big and powerful and will prey on anything that they can catch, including small elephants and rhinoceroses. Some of these tigers develop a taste for human flesh and turn into man-eaters. Leopards and ocelots are other cats that roam the tropical forests. Both have spots on their body that helps them hide in the shades. Leopards have survived the change in environmental damage compared to other cats and can be found in Africa and Asia. After hunting down their prey, the leopard carries the body into a tree to hide it from other animals. The most colorful inhabitants of the tropical forests are the parrots that add color to otherwise green forest. Parrots are large and noisy birds and have curved beaks for cracking nuts and cutting fruits. Parrots are known by different names across the world like macaws, cockatoos, lorikeets and parakeets. Some of these parrots have magnificent long tails and like this hyacinth macaw of Brazil is the largest parrot of all. It measures 40 inches from head to tail and inhabits the tropical forests of Brazil. The parrots have two forward pointing toes and two backward pointing toes. This enables the parrot to lift food to its mouth with one foot while the other foot it clings to a branch. Birds are in abundance in the forests of New Guinea and Australia as there are fewer mammals to compete with. These magnificent birds are the birds of paradise living in New Guinea. Male birds of paradise are brightly colored and are adorned with wild headdresses and long tails. This is there to impress and attract the females to them. This is the Hodzin bird and lives in the flooded forests of Ecuador and Peru. It is considered to be one of the strangest birds in the world and is known by the locals as the sting bird because of its disgusting and foul smell. It resembles a turkey in its look but has a bright blue face and a punk hairstyle of feathers. One of the unique characteristics of this bird is that its chicks have claws on their growing wings that they usually use to cling to trees. It is a prehistoric feature that maybe is a leftover from the distant reptilian ancestors that birds evolved from, the dinosaurs. Tropical forests are home to the largest snakes in the world. 
this green anaconda is the heaviest of all the snakes and lives in swampy parts of South America and Amazon. The longest snake is the reticulated python. It can grow as long as 32 feet. These are just two of the thousands of reptile species that live in tropical forests. The damp climate of a rainforest is an ideal place for amphibians to develop and thrive. Amphibians are animals that live partly in water and partly on land. Frogs, toads and salamanders belong to the family of amphibians. The many pools, puddles and slow-moving rivers provide a large number of sites for the tadpoles to develop. The strange calls of the frogs and tadpoles often fill the air at night in the rainforests. There are some frogs in tropical forests that have beautiful skin colors and patterns on their skin. These warn the predators that it can be poisonous. This is the poison dart frog living in the Amazon. It has the most spectacular colors and also the most deadly poison. The most dangerous species of the poison dart frog is found in the western Colombia. A single lick of its skin can kill. People living in the forest use its skin to poison their arrow tips for hunting. Tree frogs are the other amazing frogs that can be found here. They have sticky discs on their toes and it helps them cling to leaves and branches. Some of these tree frogs even lay their eggs in trees. They glue their eggs to the undersides of the leaves that hang over water. When tadpoles develop, they drop into the water below, thus beginning a new life. This flying amphibian is the flying frog. These frogs are also tree frogs with webbed feet and skin flaps that act like wings. It enables them to glide up to 50 feet after leaping from a tree. Large animals are easy to spot in tropical forests, but they are insignificant compared to the insects and other invertebrates that teem over every surface in a tropical forest. Invertebrates are animals that have no backbone like worms and spiders. Ranging from huge spike-covered crickets to shiny beetles that appear to be made of metal, tropical forests present a spectacular tiny world of these species. The wandering spiders of Brazil are considered to be the world's most dangerous spiders. They are so aggressive that they wander into houses and attack people with slight provocation and its single bite can kill. World's biggest insects have made tropical forests their home. Like this Goliath beetle is the heaviest insect that lives in Africa's Congo rainforest. It can grow up to 11 centimeters long and weigh 100 grams. When these beetles are in flight, they sound like miniature helicopters. These are the leafcutter ants found in Central and South America. They use leaf cuttings to grow an edible fungus inside their nests. These ants are said to consume more plant matter than any other group of animals in this forest. The litters of fallen leaves are also home to tiny animals. Industrious termites and ants play an important but unseen role in breaking down dead wood and plants. These tiny invertebrates maintain the nutrient cycle in the forest and without them, the plants and large animals would not survive for long. Southeast Asia is a mixture of rainforest and monsoon forest. Southeast Asia is located at the meeting point of three of the plates that make up the Earth's crust. Many mountains, volcanoes and islands have been created by the movements of these plates. The coast is covered with mangrove swamps that are forests growing in salt water. People have cut down much of the forest to grow crops such as rice. Another cause of deforestation is the logging for valuable hardwoods and mining. 
Even after deforestation, lush green forests have survived on many islands and mountains. These are orangutans, also known as the old man of the forest. A very interesting story was told by local people that orangutans were old men who grew tired of living in villages. So they had left for forests to lead a quiet life in the trees. But the fact is that they are apes that once used to live all over Southeast Asia. Now they survive only in patches of forest on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. They have a few natural enemies and grow and breed very slowly. Their average lifespan is 45 years. In its 45 years lifespan, a female orangutan has time to raise only four young. Intensive care is taken of each baby, the mother carrying the baby all the time during its first year. At night, the mother and baby sleep together in nests of woven branches. Solid food is given to the baby only in its third year. The mother will not have another baby for the next eight years. Tropical forests have been exploited by people through ages. From hunter-gatherers of the past to the scientists of today, all have been making use of tropical forests for various reasons. The human race evolved in the tropics. So it can be assumed that people have been living in tropical forests as long as the human species has existed. It is difficult to imagine how people lived many thousands years ago. But there is a possibility that their lifestyle was similar to some modern day forest people. The people of Amazon forests until recent times lived in small communities of hunter-gatherers. They are people who collect and hunt their food from the wilderness instead of growing crops. Remote parts of Amazon still have people living in this way. They are far away from towns and roads and hunt for their living. Today, they use gun for hunting, but in the past, their weapons were blowpipes, bows and arrows, nets or spears. Besides hunting, they collect mushrooms and wild plants like fruit, nuts and swollen roots. This is Central Asia's Congo rainforest. It is home to pygmies. Pygmies are people who are very short and their height ranges between 4 feet to 4 feet 8 inches tall. These pygmies use small bows that fire poison arrows to hunt. They also collect honey from bees nest. Collecting honey here is a dangerous task considering the ferocious temperament of African killer bees. People here live in small communities and build temporary dwellings in the forest. It is interesting to know that this community has no single leader and the members of the community have general discussion to solve any problem. Marriages are arranged between communities and people can leave one community to join another whenever they feel like. But the hunter-gatherer way of life is on the verge of being extinct in Congo. Forests are shrinking at an alarming rate because of the farmers who arrive from outside to cut down the forest and clear the land for farming. The pygmies exchange meat from their farming neighbors with crops like bananas, corn and rice. Other than the continent of Africa, there are forest living people in Sri Lanka and the Andaman Islands in the Indian Ocean. These people here might be related to the forest people of Congo as they look more like Africans than Asians and they are barely 5 feet tall. Before the human civilization started settling down and became farmers, the world's people lived as hunter-gatherers. Today, they have become limited to a certain area and live in tough environments where farming is difficult. 15th century saw the European sailors exploring the world and the driving force behind them was trade. For a European merchant, a tropical forest was nothing more than a place where spices grew. 
but the Spice Islands, which is present in Indonesia, were very far away. To reach that land, the sailors had to take a long voyage all the way around Africa, and so they started looking for shortcuts. One such adventurous sailor was Christopher Columbus, who was of the opinion that he could reach the Spice Islands by sailing west. But he was wrong, and this wrong deed of his introduced Europeans to the Americans. The Dutch started controlling the production of spices in Southeast Asia by the 17th century. They tried to restrict one spice to one island and destroyed the spice trees on all other islands in the area to ensure that they would get the highest price for their crop. However, their plan was foiled by pigeons that ate the fruits of spice trees and deposited seeds in their droppings on neighboring islands. In the modern day, some of the world's largest cities like Bangkok in Thailand and Sao Paulo in Brazil are located in the tropics. The heavy tropical rains have been successfully harnessed by the people to provide power to these cities. But in turn, these hydroelectric power plants have damaged the balance of the tropical forests, resulting in the death of various plants and animals. This is New Guinea a rugged wilderness of mountains and rainforests. Due to very high rainfall, more than two-thirds of New Guinea is cloaked in dense rainforest. The wildlife of New Guinea is similar to that of Australia and has mammals that carry their young in pouches. Plants of tropical forests are no less than chemical factories. They produce all kinds of poisonous chemicals that protect them from being eaten. But for us humans, some of these chemicals can be useful drugs. Many of the plant chemicals are already being used as drugs to treat malaria and cancer of blood. Inside the tropical forest lies a wealth of drugs that can be used for the welfare of the mankind. So it all becomes all the more important to protect these forests before they become extinct. The future of tropical forest is not bright as the world's tropical forests are disappearing at an alarming rate from the face of the earth. This in turn is making many of the species of these forests become extinct. Deforestation is one of the major causes of these tropical forests disappearing. It is assumed that if deforestation continues at this rate, then the world's entire tropical forest could disappear in less than 100 years. The history of deforestation goes back to thousands of years when people living in forests have cleared small areas to use as vegetable gardens. Today, as the human population has increased multifold, the settlers have started clearing bigger areas of forests for farming. It is important to understand that chopping down trees is not the only way to make money from the tropical forests. A mixture of new ideas and methods used by local people since thousands of years can be successfully implemented to grow food and other products without damaging the forest beyond repair.